I want to do a larger example, which takes the idea of events and adds in working with real data. So a real, I mean, a really common pattern that you're going to have in building React or other um, applications like this, front-end applications, is you're going to have data that you want to run, you want to show in the app. The data comes from some remote API. So in this case, I want to show a bunch of user pictures, similar to what we've been doing in, in previous uh, examples. And I want to determine what to show while things are being loaded. So one of the things about the web is the web is this, uh, it's, a, it's a thing that you have to render now, even though the data is coming later. So how do you deal with that? And how do you deal with the, the the case that the data never comes. What if there's an error? What if the server goes down? What if the network goes down? So all kinds of problems of things we could run into here. So so let, let's dive into this and uh, let's build up a, an example that uses the techniques that um, we've been talking about. Okay, so as a reminder, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep using this API because it's fairly simple and it's gonna let us basically work with rendering. You remember these uh, these smiling faces here? We want to be able to render out these uh, users. And so we want to be able to get this data from the uh, recres.in API, and we want to be able to, to render it. Okay, so we have an app here, and this app is going to need to do a couple of things. So the first thing it's going to need to do is it's going to need to load some data. So the way that we load the data is we say, all right, I'm gonna render the data here. Uh, this is how it's gonna get rendered. And I need to figure out when to load it. So whenever you have some sort of a side effect like this, which is I wanna load the data in some case, I wanna load the data in the first case or whatever, I need to add uh, this thing from React, this hook called use effect use effect from React. And we use these hooks at the top of our components and we, we say that this particular component, my app component, is gonna use this effect and the first thing that it takes is a function and the second argument that it takes is a list of dependencies. So any pieces of data, props or state that this is dependent upon and on which it will it will re, you know it'll run it again. So if you want to have so if you don't define any dependencies, it'll just run constantly. It'll run over and over and over and over again. In our case, what I want to do is I want to tell it to only run the very first time. And the way you do that is you just put in an empty set of dependencies, so an empty uh, an empty array like that. So this is what my effect is going to look like. And if we, so to begin with, I'm gonna say console.log uh, use effect was run, just to show you what's going on here. So, and down here, I'm gonna say console.log uh, render, rendering like that. So if I go back here and I look at the, look, if you watch the console, when I save this, you'll see that it renders first, and then after it renders the first time, it calls the side effect and does whatever we tell it to do here. All right, so obviously we don't want a console log. What do we want to do? Well, we'd like to be able to get this data, the data that you see right here. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm going to do a fetch. I'm going to fetch HTTPS recres.in slash api slash users, and that'll be good enough for now. And when this thing is finished, when it comes back, it's gonna give me a response. And if something goes wrong, I have to also deal with the error case. So I have something that looks like this. All right, so what am I gonna do with the response? First thing I'm gonna do with the response is I'm gonna check to see if it worked. So I'm gonna say if the response is okay, like so, well, I'm gonna flip the logic. I'm gonna say if it's not okay, if in other words, if we don't get back a 200, then I'm gonna throw uh, a new error, unable to download users. 
And when you throw, it's going to end up here in the catch. So this is where it'll go. So right now we could say console.error um, and I could just, you know, I could print out this error message if we wanted to. Something simple like that. Okay, so if that's if it doesn't work. If it does work, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to parse the JSON like this. And when you parse the JSON, this also returns a promise. So you have to return. Whenever you're in a then, you should always return. And so that means that down here, I'm going to have another then in my chain. So I'm going to say, when this comes back and I get the final result, then I want to do something with the result. So for now, let's just console.log result like this. So now if we go back here and we re, if I, uh, let me get rid of this here. So let's save this. And you'll see that it says use effect was run. And then it prints out the results. The data comes back and I get my data of six elements in the array. All the users are here. Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to put that data somewhere. So I'm going to use this other hook, use state. And up at the top here, I'm going to say, const users and set users is equal to use state and then I set a default value. So the users is going to be an array. And so I have a couple of options. I could either say null or I could say that it's an empty array. And you have to decide which one you want depending on whether you need users to always be an array or if you're okay with it sometimes being null. So you have to decide. <clears throat> I'll start off with it being null because I don't actually need that empty array. All right, so when the data comes back, when I get the result back here, I'm going to set users and I'm gonna take result.data. You can see data is right here on the results that I get back or you can see it even better right here. So I wanna grab this data array. So I'm going to say result.data, like so. And um, now I can hang on to that. I can hang on to that data and I can make use of it. So this isn't what we're obviously going to want to do. Uh, sorry, this isn't this isn't what we're going to want to do long term. But what we could do here is we could we could just dump the users uh, into here so you can see that we have something. So if I re-render this, uh, what's it unhappy with? Objects are not valid as a child. Set users result.data. I think, is it unhappy with me? Objects are not valid as React children object with keys. Oh, it doesn't like how I'm rendering this. So let's just do this, uh, users.length. And this will probably err because it's uh, the null case. Uh, yeah, so this is actually an interesting point. I should set. I, I should make clear why this is why you're seeing this error. So it says type error cannot read property length of null. So it's crashing right here because I'm trying to print out the length of the users. And remember above, I said if you set it equal to null, you have to be careful. So there's a couple of things I could do. I could down here. I could say. If users is true and users.length, if I do that, it would work. So it would print out nothing at first, and then the second time through, it would print out six. Um, so you'll see people using this. Another thing I could have done is I could have just set it equal to an empty array. And what that would do is the very first time through, it would print out zero. And you may or may not see it happen. It happens really quick. And then six comes up. So, you know, you have to be careful what you set your default to here when you're thinking about this. Okay, so let's let's do something else. Let's play with this because there's a neat thing you can do in here. Um, you can do a delayed response. So you can tell this API that you want it to take three seconds to return the data or four or one or whatever you want. You just say delay equals three. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna simulate a long load. So I'm gonna say delay equals, let's say two. So if I do this now and I'll go back here and I'll rerun, I'll save this and I'll rerun it. 
you'll see that at the beginning here, oh, let me go back and say users. Actually, you know what? It'll be clearer if I do this. So let's just change this to an empty array. And what it'll do is it'll print out zero. So you'll see zero sits there for a while. Come on. It sits there for a little while with zero, and then eventually the data comes in and you get a six. So we have this weird, let's make the delay even longer. We have this period where it is in this state where it doesn't have the data. Let's completely refresh this. It doesn't have any data yet, but we have to render something. So we're waiting on data to come in from, uh, from the remote API. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to manage the, I'd like to manage whether or not the app is currently in the loading state. So I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna add another state variable here. So I'm gonna say const loading and set loading equals use state false. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to decorate my effect above and below all the way through with some indications about whether or not we're currently in the loading state. So when we, the, when we start loading the data right here, I'm going to say set loading is equal to true, like that, set loading equal to true. Now, when the data is set right here, I could say uh, set loading false. And if there's an error, I could also say set loading false like that. But another thing you can do with try catch is um, you can add a dot finally like this and finally will run after both. Like in every case, it will run. And it's a good place to put something like this set loading. So I'm gonna get rid of it from here. I'm gonna get rid of it from here and I'm gonna put it here. So now we're gonna say set loading is true when we begin. And then once we get the data or we have an error at the very end, we're gonna say set loading equals false like this. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna change it so that it prints out the value of uh, loading. I'll say loading is equal to loading. So I'm gonna refresh this. Loading equals, and it doesn't have any value, so let's let's clean this up. Uh, loading true or false. So we need to make that into a string. So I'm gonna say, okay, right now it's in the loading state. Loading is true, loading is true, loading is true, and eventually it flips to loading is false. So we have this really handy little way of knowing whether or not something is loading or not. Now we could do a lot better than this. Instead of saying loading is true or false, we could put up a, uh, we could make a component that would do this. So there's lots of uh, really cool CSS out there that you can get and it's open source and there's lots of loading spinners. You've seen millions of these loading spinners while you've been waiting for pages to load all kinds of them and all of these are just done with css and so this is uh spin kit which i love i often use spin kit and i'm going to use it right now i'm going to show you how to use it so I'll, I'll just use this first one so if you look at the source what we have here is we have the html and then we have the css that we need to do this and it's using animations in css to do it so i'm going to make a new component called loading. So function loading, and I'm gonna export default loading like so. So my loading function comes up and I could just say return div loading like that at, at, to begin with. So if we were gonna use this in our app, we would import the loading function like so. And down here, what I would do is I would make a decision. So I need to replace all this with a decision 
that says, uh, if loading is true, then I want to return the loading component. And if it's not, if, if loading isn't true, then I'm gonna print out something else. So eventually I'm gonna have another component here. Right now we could just put in um, a div that says loaded or finished. Like that. So we have a little bit of conditional rendering, which is gonna be based on the fact that we know when loading has begun or when loading has finished. Let's save this, go back here and refresh this. So that was quick, let's do it again. Loading, 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 and finished, like that. Okay, so now let's clean up our loading so that it looks a bit better than what we have right now. So if you look at this right here, what we need is, I'm going to return a div with a class name equals spinner, like so. And notice that in the regular HTML, it says class equals spinner, like this is class equals spinner. And in the React, I have to say class name equals spinner. So be aware of that. Okay, so now let's add another file called loading.css. And inside here, I'm going to leave a link. I'm just gonna indicate where I got this. So when you take code from the web like this, like if I go to, um, let me close this for a second. If I go and look at this on GitHub, Here's SpinKit. SpinKit is licensed under the MIT license. And so I'm allowed to use this commercially. I'm allowed to use it privately. So I'm licensed to use this uh, in my code as long as I'm careful to uh, indicate how I'm using it. So I could say um, that I'm using it under the MIT license and uh, you know make it clear where I got it, et cetera. You could link if you want to to the uh, GitHub, like so. All right, so let's go back and see what we have to do. So if I go to the source, I'm gonna grab this CSS like so, maybe, here we go, copy that, and I'm gonna put that right here like that. Save this. Now I gotta get the loading CSS in here, so I'm gonna say, uh, import uh, loading.css. So we refresh this and we've got a loading spinner and then it finishes and it renders the other thing. So our app has the logic in it to load the data but it also has the logic in it to figure out whether or not we are going to display a loading spinner or whether we're gonna display the finished data. So the finished data is a set of users. So let's make another component. Let's have a users, users.js. And what users.js is going to do is it's gonna render those users. So let me show you how I would, how, here's how I want to use it. So instead of doing the loading spinner here, what I'd like to do is I'd like to render the users component and I wanna pass the users down as props, users equals users. So let's just make sure we understand what that means. Right here, I have my state, my default, or the state that I am working with, my users. And when the data finishes loading, I'm going to set that, set users equal to result.data. So I'm gonna push it into this state and React's gonna manage it for me. I wanna pass that data down to the users here and have it display it. So my main application, uh, let's, so let's just call this, you know, users, let's say we're building an app. My main application has this uh, logic about what to show and when to show it, but it doesn't really like, you can't really see what's going on here. Like the logic for the loading spinner is in the loading spinner. The logic for the users is going to be in the users here. So let's write a function users and users is going to receive props and on props, it's going to receive an, uh, this thing called users. So we're gonna export default users like so. 
Okay, so let's think about what we want to do here. So when this thing renders, we have to be careful because we need we assume that users is an array of objects. So if it's not, we want to not render anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if not array dot is array users. So if the thing that I get is not actually an array, then I'm going to return null like that. Otherwise, I'll return, you know, uh, div users. I'll, I'll render my component like that. So what this allows me to do is back here in my app, I can say that this is null. So I can say users is null and I can pass users down in. Let's import the users app here. Import users from users. So if I run this now, when the thing starts up, I get the loading spinner and users is not defined. What have I done wrong? Users. There we go. Okay, so by the way, you'll notice that sometimes I have to refresh the browser. So the, the browser is hot loading things, but one of the places where it can sometimes get messed up is when it recompiles your code when you add a new file, it will not be able to find that new file. So you sometimes have to do a full refresh in order to get it to fix it. So if, you've, if this looks wrong, just refresh and make sure that what you're seeing is right. It's pretty good, but it's not perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to decide whether to show the loading spinner or whether to show the users. The users is going to decide whether to render nothing or whether to render our users out like this. Okay, so let's say that I do get a list of users. Let's talk about how to do this. So I wanna have a list of users. I wanna have all the users. And let's say what I'd like is, I'd essentially like to have an image, source equals whatever, and the alt is equal to their name. And I'd like to do this, um, you know, I, I basically want to do this. I want to have a whole bunch of images for all of the different people. Okay, that's fine. So let's, let's figure this out. So to make my life easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to console.log users right here so that we can see what's happening. So let me just start with that. And I'm going to say um, users like this. So over here, you'll be able to see what's going on when this runs. Okay, so here's what my users look like. So a user has all of this data here. Maybe I can just copy and paste this in like so, so that we can look at it. So we have an avatar, an email, a first name, an ID, and a last name. Okay, so let's do the following. So I want to loop through all of the users and I want to convert them into like an image. So let's do that. So I'm going to write some JavaScript here. I'm gonna take the users array. We know it's an array because this didn't fail. So we have an array. So users, I'm gonna say dot map and I'm going to have a function that receives a user and it returns something back again. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to reach into the user and pull all the data out. So I'm gonna say const ID avatar uh, first name and last name is equal to user. So I'm just gonna take that user apart and make a bunch of variables. So I have to do less typing here below. So the first thing I'd like to do is put their name together as one thing. So I'm going to say their name is equal to um, the first name concatenated with a space and the last name, like so. So I have their name. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return uh, some return an element that I want. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. So normally an image, well, let's just do an image. Let's say image source equals the avatar. Alt text is equal to their name like that. Let's do that, okay? So if I save this, let's see how it looks. So I get back all of these 
uh, images like so. And it, but I have a warning. The warning says each child in a list should have a unique key property. So I need to be able to tell uh, React. React is managing this array of users. So it knows about the array of users. But now I'm creating this set of React elements, image elements. And it's saying to me, all right, listen, I need to know how to tell which user goes with which of these React elements. And the way you do that is on the parent of the element that you're uh, repeating, you say key equals and key equals. And what you need in here is something unique. So I have something unique. Every one of these has an ID. So I'm just going to say ID because each of the users already has this unique key. So I refresh this, it loads. And then when the data is available, poof, the data is now here and I can see, I can see the data. Okay, this is looking good. Now I wanna, I wanna connect this to what we were doing previously with, um, uh, with working with events. So back in our app, I have the, I have the uh, list of users. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to keep track of which user is currently selected. So I'm gonna add another piece of state. So I'm gonna say const uh, selected and set selected equals use state null. So by default, no user is currently selected. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I need to think about how I'm going to make it possible for me to click on a user and then have them be the selected user. So what I'd like to do is print out the name of the selected user at underneath here, okay? So if you can imagine, what I'd like to do is, um, I'd like to be able to have a div and inside the div, I wanna do something like, um, if selected exists, then I'd like to print out this user's name. So I would do something like um, have a span and in the span, I would have um, the, the, let's say that I want to, let's, well, let, let's put together the name again. So it would be um, the selected selected uh, dot first name and selected dot last name, like so. Let me make this, let me indent this a little bit. And if that's not the case, then I'd like to return null like that. So if selected is true, then I want to do this. And if it's not, then I want to do this. I want to do null. Okay. So by default, it's not going to print anything. Users load, they come up and it doesn't print anything here. So that's fine. So what I need to do is I need a way to figure out who the selected user is. So let's think about this. Inside users, I wanna make it possible to click on one of these images. So we know how to do that, right? So let's think about this. If I have an image has a key, has a source, has an alt, and we can easily add an on click, right? On click equals, and we can put a function in here. So what should we do when you click on this function? Well. What we need to do is we need to tell the parent that one of these users was clicked. So that means I need to have the parent pass me a function that I'm gonna call. So when I'm in users here, I'm going to say uh, on selected equals 
handle select like so. Let me just make some more room here. Handle select. So I'm going to write const handle select is equal to a function and the function is going to receive a user and I'm going to do set selected to the user that's passed to me. Or if you want, we could also inline this. So if it makes it cleaner, I could just take this little piece of code here and I could put it right inside here like this. So I don't know which one's cleaner. I'll leave it up here for now. So it's like this, handle select. Now you might say to yourself, there's no such thing as on selected, like users dot on selected. So we have to think about, okay, how am I going to, like how am I gonna get that down into the users? Well, what I'm gonna have to do in users is I'm gonna have to receive a function called on selected, like so, on selected. And when the user clicks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an event handler. Now, I'm not actually gonna use the, the event, so I'm just gonna leave it out. So I'm gonna say, let's call on selected. And the way that on selected works is I'm expecting to receive the user that was just selected. Now in my loop here, I know about the user. Each image has access to this user because of this closure. So in JavaScript, when you have a function inside of a function, so we have access, user is in the scope of uh, this on click handler that we're writing. So I'm gonna say, let's just return the user like so, let's return the user back up. So if I save this now and I go back to my app, let's see what happens. I click on a user and the name comes up or I click on a user, click on a user. What if we change this to, instead of on click, what if we did on hover? So now if I rerun this, uh, on hover, oh, on hover, what is it called? Uh, on mouse over, on mouse over. So when the user puts their mouse over this, let's refresh this. Data loads. I put my mouse over top of one of these and what's happening, it's updating, it's calling the event and it's passing up that user like so. And if I don't have a, uh, I have a little bug here that we could fix where if I hover over something else, like if I'm not hovering over one of these, I need to clear it. So I would need to say, you know, this one's no longer selected. So we could leave that as an exercise to fix. But for now, this is good enough. So I'm able to pass this data back up so that I can make use of it. Actually, while we're here, I was just thinking, uh, why don't I show you how I would fix this bug? So we have it so that when the mouse goes over an image, we call our uh, on selected handler here and we pass it the user. But we could do the same logic. We could say when the mouse uh, is no longer over it on mouse out, then what we could do is we could say, um, on selected and we could just pass null. So we could basically clear out that state. So if I, if I save this, and I refresh this. So if I hover over a user, and as soon as I, as the mouse goes out, or if I go from one user to the next, it it changes. So it's 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 doing exactly what I want now, so that I have this you know hover action, and it's managing two different events, but it's synthesizing them together into one. So I have this concept of just being like this and we could also add a click event. So if I on mouse, on click and I could say on click equals same deal. Like this. So a click event would do it, a mouse over would do it. 
you know, I can click on it and it, it all of them would work. Uh, okay, so this is looking pretty good. So I wanna, just because we're talking about different styles of how we could do this, I wanna, I wanna uh, improve this just a, a tiny bit more. And that is right now, if we have an error, we're not really doing anything. So what if I pass in the wrong user data? Like what if I give the wrong URL here? So it's loading, 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 loading. And eventually it comes up and it's like, we have like all this undefined data. Like this is not what we want. The data, you know, this this is no good. It's printing out a list of, of garbage basically. Like we don't have what we want. So I need to modify the way that this works. So the same way that I did a loading class, let's add another new file. Let's call this, um, uh, let's just call it warning, warning.js. So export default function warning, return a div and it says error, unable to load data, like so. So now let's use this warning in our app so up above here, I'm gonna pull it in. Like so. From. And what I'm gonna do is similar to the way I did loading, I'm gonna do another piece of state for the error case. Like so. So if there's an error, I'm going to set error and I'm gonna pass in the error like so. Error, let's, let's pass in the error so that we keep track of the error like this. So now we have a lot of logic here. Like if there's an error, if there's not an error, if there's loading, if there's not loading. So I'm gonna break this up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is the following. I'm gonna say, if there's an error, then I want to return the uh, warning component like that. If there's not an error, I'm going to check if we're loading. If we're loading, then I'm going to return the loading component like that. And that's going to allow me to simplify this. So I'm going to be able to do that like so. So I've got a couple of states here where um, I render different things depending on what's going on in the app. And this is great. I'm just using JavaScript to uh, have it, you know, show it the way that I want to show it. So let's save this. Let's see how it works. So it loads and uh, so let's figure out what I'm not doing right here with this error state. So if I'm, I'm not getting an error here, why not? Let's, uh, API, let's try this. There we go. Unable to load data. So it prints out my error message, unable to load users, and it says unable to load data. So let me ask you a question. If you're using a web app and it does this, how do we make it try again? Well, it's kind of annoying because I don't have a way to make that happen, but I could do the following in my warning. I could say unable to load data and I could, um, could put a button in here that says try again, like this. And now I have a try again button. So how am I gonna make this thing try again? Well, okay, so what I need is I need, a, I need something for the on click here. So I'm going to, let's pass in 
try again is a function and on click I'm going to call the try again function like so and in my app I need a try again function so when I do the warning here I'm gonna say try again is equal to and I need I need a way to have it try it again so this is tricky so in react the way that I do that is I need to tell this effect that I want it to run again so right now I have a dependency that says only run this once at the beginning but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another const retries set retries equals use state and I'll set it to zero to begin with and I'm gonna have this depend on retries. So what I've done here is, I've said this effect needs to be run every time this variable changes. So the very first time through it's gonna run, and then it's not gonna run again until this variable gets updated, and then it will run it again here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I'm also gonna try and, and kill the cache on this. So a, a way that people do this is they will take a URL like this and they will add in some other unique thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass in uh, retries here like so. So the API that I'm sending this to isn't gonna use that data, but it's gonna be a way for my browser to not use the cache because the URL has changed. So I'm just updating it slightly so that it will it'll be a different a different call on the network. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is whenever the user clicks retry or try again, I'm going to say set retries is going to be retries plus one. So I'm going to update it. So let's try this. So this will work because I haven't broken my API here. So this is fine. Everything's working the way it should. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break the API again. I'm gonna say two, and I'll show you on the network what's happening if I look at all the XHR calls. So you can see here down at the bottom, it says users delay equals three and zero. I'm gonna click try again, and you'll see it now it tried it again, and it did it with one. And if I click try again, it comes back and I get with two. So every time I'm clicking this, it's trying to do that load again. And it's not working because in this case, I've got a broken uh, URL. But I have, a, I have a system now where I'm using events to be able to, and data to be able to deal with the fact that this, so if I try this again, let's reload this. I get my loading spinner and then it loads up all my data. And if it failed, I would have I would have the ability to click on try again and trigger this to happen again. So this is pretty good. Um, I, this is a good place to pause. We've been able to do a more realistic uh, loading scenario where we have future data that's coming in. We want to be able to conditionally load a loading spinner or conditionally load an error message. Uh, we want to be able to deal with the case that the data is null or the data is an array and we have to be able to do different things. So one of the great things about React is it's all just JavaScript. So if you know how to do something in JavaScript, if this ternary operator, like any of the tricks you know for just doing uh, Boolean logic in JavaScript, they all work in React. You can render null to show nothing. You can render one component or another component depending on the state of whatever it is that you want to do. And whenever we want to be able to share data between components, we put it in a parent and then pass it down to the children, including these event handlers, these callback functions that we want to be able to call and then trigger something in the parent, like updating a piece of state. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to be talking about routing.